What's going on y'all? Chuck and Unface here. Three knives on the table. All three of them have two things in common. One is very obvious to pretty much everybody by taking a quick look at them. They are all Spyderco knives. The other thing that is in common with them is they are all made in Tai Chung. So they are all from the Tai Chung Taiwan plant. So three knives done in different styles. Well, let's see. They're a little big. Let's see if we can get them to all fit right there. All from the Taichung Taiwan factory. So if you haven't done so already, I certainly would appreciate it if you could click that little subscribe button there in the corner. It does help out a lot. I want to thank everybody who has subscribed. I recently hit the 1,000 subscriber milestone. That is awesome. I definitely appreciate that from everybody. Um, you guys rock for you know getting me to that point. I definitely appreciate that. So I hope to just keep on trucking along. Makes me feel good that, you know, at least a thousand people uh, think my stuff is worth watching. So, thank you very much once again. Excuse me, I had to take a quick drink of soda. In any case, um, yeah, these three knives right here. A lot of folks consider the Tai Chung Spider Co's to be some of, if not the best Spider Co's made. Um, better than Seki Japan, better than, you know, the Golden Colorado. Uh, USA made ones and well certainly better than their budget line the Chinese made knives which they're they're fine for what they are they're marketed as budget and everything else so they're fine for what they are um, you know they really they go, they tend to go to China for their top end models models like the Paisan which frankly I don't like very much models like the Nirvana uh, which I've never actually handled the the new Capara well not new but relatively new Capara comes out of there um, all the sleaze knives come out of there, the buoy and the, the Techno and uh, the Swayback and all of those uh, come from that, that plant as well as, of course, these three right here. Now, I recently did a video on the Valaton Subhilt, so I'm not going to go into too many details about all these knives here. I just kind of wanted more talk in general sense about them. Um, so as, as I said, we do have the Spyderco Valaton. We have the... Uh, the Shemp Bui from the Ethnic series, and then we have this Bad Mamma Jamma right here, which is the Spider Coat Subvert. So that's uh, designed by Butch Valaton, designed by Ed Shemp, and designed by Nadia Moore, Black Snow Customs. Um, and this one is a little bit different. If you look at this one right here, it is not in its original configuration. Its original would have been um, kind of a blasted tie uh, scales right there, or liners, I should say and then bright orange G10 overlays in a, in a you know silver spoon clip and, and blasted hardware, things like that. But this was uh, Cerakoted by a previous owner. In fact, I may just link the video to this knife in the description. This formerly belonged to Bearded Gear, who's a fellow YouTuber. Um, he, he does a lot of good stuff on his channel right there. And so this is his knife, and he got this done, Cerakoted uh, by uh, River's Edge Cutlery through their Cerakote service. So if you're looking for a review on this knife, I don't think I'm going to do a review on this one. You can just go ahead and check out his, I think he did three videos, unboxing and initial impressions, and then like an update and then a full review video on this. That's usually his way of doing things. Um, let's see, the sleaze, or the sleaze, this is the Shemp Bowie. Um, this is a very interesting model. This is out of production at this point. It's part of the Ethnic series, which was um, done by Spyderco. They used different designers. Shemp did two, I believe. He did this one here, which is the, of course, the Shemp buoy. And he also did the Navaja, which had a distinctive uh, Caraca ratchet sound um, a spring in there that would, that would make a sound when it was opened up like a, a rattling, like a ratchet. Um, but anyway, uh, this one here is a brass bolster with a peel ply G10 stainless steel backspacer wire clip, which I really like the wire clips, to be honest with you. I mean, people are kind of split on whether they like them or not, but I really like the wire deep carry clips. This one got a little scuffed up, but, you know, such is life. The brass on this develops a nice patina over time. It's just from carrying and use. Um... You know, just handling it, the oils in your fingers are going to, you know, develop a patina on that brass. Um, the peel ply G10 on this is nice. Generally, I don't like Spyderco's. I maybe it's just the peel ply covered fiber on their newer ones. Um, 
what did I have? It was a silver axe, I think. God, I hated the feel of that, but maybe I've just changed. I haven't had that in my hand in years. Um, maybe it felt the same, but it felt a lot cheaper than this, but maybe I'm wrong. I am not sure. This is a really unique knife. The ergos are kind of funny on this, as you can as you can look. It's got that forward arcing blade, that deep clip, um, and that really nice grinds that you tend to see from Tai Chung. And it's just, it's got a really interesting feel in hand. It looks like it might be awkward, but it really isn't. All of the grips, if you want to choke up, that's comfortable. If you want to do it like that, that's very comfortable. If you want to put your thumb right there, like this, it's all comfortable. There's no real hot spots. The only flaw I would say is in the lock bar relief. There's not much of a relief right there for this one. And it's also a little sharp right there, so it would really benefit from being knocked down a little bit. Maybe being made, this this part right here being cut out a little bit more, and this being ground down just a hair. Because it's a little difficult to get to with just your thumb. I tend to use my nail when I'm doing it in order to get in there. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, one thing you will notice, I think I touched, I just touched on this briefly, is the grinds from Tai Chung are very distinctive and they're really nice kind of probably a 400 grit belt something like that they've all got that one's a little dirty so I can't clean that off a little bit I don't know what I did with this last but yeah it's a little dirt on the blade a little smuts but it is what it is but they all have those real nice grinds If I can get the light just right. They look really nice. Uh, the fit and finish on all of these is really good. You know, no complaints. That's nicely dovetailed in there. You see? Can't really feel a gap. I mean, if I close my eyes and rub my finger over it, I mean, I can tell there's a transition because the two materials feel different, but I can't really notice a real transition. It's the same with going the G10 to steel on this. You can't really feel the gaps. I mean, maybe there's a tiny bit of a, of a transition that I feel right there, but not much of one. Um, and then this, I mean, it's not really the same thing, but, you know, really well constructed. Nice thick liners on this. You gotta like that. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll do a full review of this knife. I just really kind of wanted to talk about these knives because I got them all kind of in the same window. Um, within the same month period, something like that. I got all three of these knives. And so I think they're really just very, very cool, very well constructed. I really like the Tai Chung factory production. I really like what they do over there. Um, these all have S30V. Tai Chung typically works in S30V, S90V. Um, I have seen some XHP come out of there. I would love to have seen these in XHP instead of S30V, but it kind of is what it is. Um, Spyderco just announced a new sprint run of the, uh, the Subvert, so it'll have 20 CV and a carbon fiber scale. Um, I don't know if it's a full carbon fiber scale or if it's going to be like the thick TI liners and then carbon fiber overlays like this one is. Probably it's going to be overlays. I've only seen one picture and I don't remember exactly if it was that way or if it was a full carbon fiber scale. I can't quite remember. Um, you know, the price point on that is probably going to be pretty steep. Uh, I don't know if 20 CV, that's really not my favorite. S90V I like a lot more. XHP I like a lot more than 20 CV, but... You know, the Spyderco tends to heat treat really well, so you know I wouldn't be too too concerned with that, at least. You know, this is more... I'm kind of rambling in this video a little bit because I don't really have a focus on one particular knife as, as far as a review goes. I'm just kind of talking about these knives right here. Um, I definitely like all of them for different reasons. Some of the same reasons. Um... I don't know if I'm going to hang on to this. In fact, I'll probably end up moving this along. It's a very cool knife, but you know, I don't see it as one that I really need to to keep in the collection. I think it's more it's just one of those where I'm glad I got a chance to experience it and kind of see what it was all about. Um, but I don't think it'll stay forever. I'll probably end up moving this one along. Um, I will say this, though, is 
whenever you watch a review of this knife, they always say how big it is, how big it is, and everything else. Yeah, it's big. I mean, clearly it's, I mean, it's sizable. I mean, look how thick it is. I mean, this one's already thick. This knife is super thin, you know, but yeah, it's really thick knife, but it's not, I mean, in jeans or something like that, it really doesn't stand out. But I also carry, you know, Medfords and Striders and things like that. So, so this knife, I really don't see as being that big a deal. This one's very much the opposite. Um, this is just very easy to carry, very easy to EDC and whatever really you're wearing, that deep carry clip. And it's also really lightweight too. Um, it's really not heavy. Um, oh yeah, but other, and the other thing about this one is, you know, a lot of people might be hesitant to sharpen something like this. I sharpened this in my KME and I got to tell you, it really wasn't that hard. Um, I didn't use the recurve, the jewel stick that I have, um, for the, for the recurve sharpening. Uh, it's a very mild recurve right there. I just used flat stones and I just kept everything moving and just, just lateral moves and, and kind of going up and back and up and back. Never really like this on the knife. Just kind of more of a sweeping motion as I was doing it. And it really, I kept the same, pretty much the same angle all the way to the tip. I mean, I didn't have to do any adjustments. And so I clamped it in the KME. I didn't clamp it straight on. I probably did something like that when I clamped it at an angle like that and it worked out fine it really was not hard to put a fresh edge on this because when i got it i doubt bearded gear ever sharpened it um because i think he even commented on that in his video that he was going to move it along he didn't really want to get to the point where he had to sharpen it and then the guy i got it from i really doubt he sharpened it at any point um but i did end up sharpening it so the next owner of this knife will have a they won't have to deal with sharpening it for a while. They'll just have to strop it. Um, this one right here, the Shemp Bowie, I don't know if I'm going to end up keeping this one either. I like it. It's another knife where I thought I was definitely, I was really excited about it. And I really do like it. I think it's a great knife, but I don't know if I'm going to keep this one either. Um, but I will be keeping the uh, the Valaton. Uh, this one is one of my favorite knives that I've purchased recently. Um, and it's pretty much my favorite Spider Co. In general I think this is for me I mean a lot of people will will disagree there the spider go is very prolific they have a lot of different knives but this might be the favorite one of mine that they've ever made um, you know if I ever if I lost this I would probably consider buying it again which says a lot um, you know ask me in six months if I feel the same way but as of right now you know, I think this is just one of the better knives that I've purchased in a while uh, you know, I touched on this in the in the review I did this a couple a couple of weeks ago. You know, it's only S30V, it's stainless steel liners, it's G10. But I think for something to be great, it has to just be more than a, a, a sum of its parts. It's got to be the way it's constructed, it's gotta be the way it's finished, it's gotta be the feeling it evokes and inspires uh, in the end user. And this knife has that more, certainly more than these two for me, and probably more than a lot of knives that I've handled recently. Um, this knife just really, I think, is tip top. And it's available still. They re released it. It is available. I would go ahead, listen, you do you, but I really recommend this um, quite a bit. That you can't get except on the secondary. This, I think. Retail prices are pretty bananas on this, and the Sprint Run is probably going to be pretty bananas as well. To me, retail on this is not worth it. I got a really good deal used on this, so I was happy to pick it up, um, but I do think retail on this is worth it. Um, in any case, that's going to do it. Just kind of some quick thoughts on some Resix Spider Co's that I got, all from the Tai Chung plant. So I figured it was it was apt to kind of just share some thoughts of mine um, you know, on these knives here. And uh, hopefully you'll chime in in the comments and let me know what you think. Which one of these would you keep? Have you tried all of these? Have you tried any of these? You know, is, after watching this, are, are there one of these that you think you would want to try to get for yourself? Um, have you had them and sold them? What's the deal? Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, go ahead and share this video if you don't mind. Share it with a friend. Get it out there and everything else. I certainly do appreciate that. Drop a like, hit that subscribe if you haven't done so already by just clicking right there in the corner. I certainly do appreciate it. Thank you again for 1,000 plus subscribers. 
going to keep on putting out some some content here and hopefully y'all keep on enjoying it peace